Bay from a side lane. Oh, this is so interesting though, because the faker we saw on Nico at Rift Rivals does a number on Genji. And what am I talking about? Is that just that he was playing good? No. Don't you remember how his roaming on Nico, yeah. his ability to jump out of minion waves, Lux is going to sit back and not take any damage. But she doesn't push the wave super fast early. Meanwhile, Nico can walk on the wave. That's where the Rome jungle gank in particular can be strong. Speaking of jungle ganks. Yeah, that's a big flash in onto the Lux. Permafrost is going to be there, and that's Perma CC. Without turning back into Nico. It's cleared. Uh oh. Yep, flash. Peanut's going to follow. They are going to easily take him down, and it's just whether or not they can Lane give from the kill. SKT, this was set up in champs. Yeah, big teleport's going to come in. We're looking for the devour timing. Life goes golden as well as Ruler has to flash to get himself out of the way. They do manage to pick up one of them. And Teddy under the turret's doing so much work. Faker goes golden to keep himself alive, but they have to navigate this one. It's a double kill coming in for the Aatrox as Peanut eventually takes him down, but can they get more? Permafrost comes in effort, joins the rest of his team. Teddy's still raining damage down. Another Devourer has been used. That's how long this has gone for. A stunning dive as Peanut is still alive, trying to deny effort. Getting Roller. it out, Ruler's teleported. A double kill for Peanut, and that one. Arctic Assault there. They're trying is, to fight back yeah, again for this the Rift Herald. They really want to pick it up here, Atlas. That's why they're re-engaging. Yeah. The objective is down, but that eye is going to start flickering. Yep, Kive able to break the barrel there as well. Final Spark comes down. Khan may just be eliminated before anything has even happened. Good flash. Gets Kive out of the way of Faker's Pop Blossom. But Faker's able to get the Shape Splitter. I have a feeling he might have sacrificed himself for this, but does pick up the Eye of the Herald and lands the Snare. Cannon Barrage comes in. Barrel's now being utilized. Cube not going to be able to get the explosion. Teleport going to be utilized here as well as Cube. He's got enough damage. Cube here. They're going to go in. Yep, some extra information given over to Cube, but he's unable to actually keep himself alive. There is no flash available. And Phantom firing down his mid lane. Yep, Sandwich is going to come in, but that's the aftershock utilized. The subjugation is so huge. Peanut alive for so long. It's just ludicrous, but the turret is going to be taken down. And eventually, Peanut goes as well. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Their turn is very, very strong, as now they might have found effort underneath this turret. Uh oh, Pop Blossom. Big flash in from Faker. Does get one, but it's a good one. The lock's already dead. Goes immediately into his Zonya's Hourglass, now trying to get himself out of there. And that's the real one. The positioning wasn't known in life, able to use the Greyhound very well, but not quite well enough as Peanut wants to try and kill Faker, gets the right one this time, but now should be routed. Ruler still alive on the back end, Infernal Chain's unable to make it work, as Cubey's almost immortal with Ruler behind him. The flash in with the Arctic Assault as Teddy tries to throw out Jungle autos. That they have control of right now, that gives them Baron spotting. Here comes the Abyssal Voyage, and walks up. That's just life getting in there, effort. It's gonna walk up without too much response. Final Spark comes in, but Faker has he found the flank that he wants. The shields are just too big. He's not able to get any of the work done, and I think finally, Genji's composition has come online. Teddy way too low. Cube stopping Clit from adding to this fight whatsoever. Great. And Gen could be picked up as well on Genji's side. This is going from bad to worse. And smart so from Genji, but from there, the moment they repelled that turret dive, the scaling has been true. And now SKT looking for a chase. Yeah, Cube caught out of position there. At the moment with no inhibitor turret bot lane, as here we go. That infernal chain landing is just insane. Not entirely sure how that even worked, as there was Lux. one minion left alive. The Lux is gonna go down. SKT trying to brute force a win. They have no minions, and Ruler finds a huge crescendo. Faker in trouble, getting slowed, remember, has no flash. Can't get out of here unless he throws in some shenanigans. Speaking of which, see you later, Ruler! And Faker turns this whole game to on throw something head. down, but they're throwing the kitchen sink at him. Cube's dead already. Peanut's gonna get knocked up, stunned for what feels like forever, but True Shot Barrage not enough. Eventually, it is going to be Khan that finishes it, and SKT out of the jaws of defeat tear themselves a victory. What an exciting... Let's see how the Fiora is going to go in this split push because Cube has been on a tear on the Camille as well. There's a lot of differences in this draft, even if for a lot of people it might look like a rollback because a lot of lanes have changed around here and SKT's done some intriguing things. They could have just taken on hit 
Nico, which we already saw open up a 100 plus CS lead on Kark. And that isn't usually under that much pressure in this matchup, unless you have the minimap in the Ooh. awkward spot is mid lane. Yeah, Snare comes down, Blooming Burst, a lot of damage is uh all -oh. oh, cleared. Perfect positioning, Trouble Bubble is going to land, but this time the pillar is true. And oh, clear to make something happen here is Fly is coming in, they're looking for the pincer. Yeah, he's got a dash cannon, doesn't land the Paddle Star. Is, there's another Pop Blossom. Does get one of the stuns onto Peanut. Khan's gonna make his way down. Fake is dead already though. And now the flash forward from Fly. Gets himself to skirmish as Saber Smite and Clid will be falling, but Khan's able to take down the Camille off the back end. Peanut taking so long to kill this Trundle as Fly dealing with Khan as best he can. Trouble Bubble is going to be blocked by the Repost, but Fly's not going to get hit as Genji managed to hit level six. Lands it onto Khan there. He's looking for the Repost cooldown. To Ooh, I don't believe he was spotted out there as Peanut's going to make his way in. Repost is going to come down. There's the Hextech ultimatum. Clit's going to make it a 1v2, but all of the vitals have been hit, and Khan keeps himself alive so, so well. It's all about never hook shotting. Watch how the play actually goes though, because Khan's down to 300 health, holds onto the wall, flashes over. Pick up the kill there. Very nicely done by QV in the 1v1. The last time I remember a Camille holding onto the wall for a long time, do you remember Smep yeah, versus Untara in the Jax versus Camille matchup? It's a different matchup, but still cool to see. Yeah. 14 minutes. Yep, Abyssal Voyage is going to come in just to try and defend this turret, but Ruler is going to be left on his own. He didn't take the Voyage, and this is what happens. Crescendo used with absolutely no gain. Answered. Has SKT been when it comes to those turrets? Is Khan looking for Fly Grand Challenge once again? As Peanut's going to turn up. Doesn't find the ultimate there as the Repost now going to be on cooldown, and now it's going to be whether or not Khan can lunge in time, and he just straight up can't. Has to flash to get himself out of the way. The flash forward from Fly, and the Arctic Assault's going to miss, but it's not enough. Enough sparkles available from Fly as Abyssal Voyage, double teleport, make that a triple as Faker gets himself into the brush behind Gen G. They've rotated first, they've tried to get catches. And speaking of catches, QB going to be slowed. This will yeah. take a while. Glacial Augment is one hell of an ability as uh, the rest of SKT are going to turn up. Baker still hunting for more, just the tip. Losing mid lane turret would be a disaster. So it's bot lane, we've seen this before. Yep, Hookshot comes in, QV gets himself out of the way of it. Out of the way of the pillar for the moment as the grand challenge is in and QV is very much dead. Free. Got really sad with the rework is uh, Baker. He's going to turn up, gets the flash pop blossom, and that's a very dead Sona, meaning SKT in a much better position for this team fight. But can you even call it that? The bottom lane forced their way forward. Pop blossom is once again available. Shape splitter needs to be respected as well. Crescendo is going to be used, but nothing gained. Great two man ultimate coming in from effort there as well as Trouble Bubble lands onto Clid, but Peanut finds the one gap in the SKT army to put the Glacial Prison. And that could be all she wrote. As you can see, SKT, they're still able to get poke in. They've got a minion wave prepared on the top side of the map. Fly down to half health now. Peanut does have a health bar to work with, and SKT is starting to go lower as Faker. No flash this time around, and no pop blossom now, as Cube thinks that it's time to go in. But I don't think it is. Blooming Burst is going to come down. Life is going to sacrifice himself for the good of Cube. But is it the good of the team is the question. SKT find the one pick, and now they're back onto Nexus turrets once again. Epic goes into his stopwatch. You've got second Nexus turret now under fire. Still a lot of members left of Gen G, but SKT are done with this game. And they want to take down the Nexus and seal their sixth 2 0 in a row. Oh. They just want to kill this Nexus. Can they actually do it? Clid's there. Two man crescendo. Not enough. SKT.